Horticulture is the art of cultivating plants. Both gardeners and horticulturists alike need to identify plants correctly in order to select and grow them properly. Most people find learning plant names a daunting task. The first and most important step is become relaxed and comfortable about using plant names. Don't be scared of strange new words. This video will make that task much easier. Don't expect to learn everything overnight. Some people get a grasp of plant names in a few months, others take years. Persistence is important. Above all, don't worry about pronunciation. The scientific system of plant classification has been established to ensure plant names are written the same throughout the world. The names are not meant to be spoken the same throughout the world. The main thing about pronunciation is to be comfortable about saying the words. And the best way to become comfortable is to hear other people using those words. Watch videos. Join a garden club. Talk with nursery staff. These all help. The words used in many plant names are descriptive Latin words. Get to know some of these words and their meanings and you'll find it much easier to remember words. Good plant identification books are a big help, but don't expect all books to be accurate. Always look to the background of the author. The best books are usually written by people with a reputable background, perhaps a graduate from a reputable college or associated with a reputable and relevant association or society. Plants have two types of names, common and scientific. Common names may be easy to remember, but they're not accurate. To identify plants correctly, you must use scientific plant names. There are more than 20 levels of classification used by scientists, but you really only need to learn about three, maybe four. Plants which have broad similarities to each other can be grouped into families. Plants with daisy-like flowers, for instance, are in the Asteraceae family. And all of your grasses, they're in the Poaceae family. Plant families are then divided into a number of subgroups called genera, the singular being genus. These are plants that have a number of similarities but don't generally interbreed. Genera are further divided into subgroups called species. These are plants that are closely related genetically and freely interbreed. Scientific names of plants are normally written as two words, the first word being the genus, the second word being the species. In simple terms, you can think of a genus being like a person's surname and a species being like the same person's Christian name. An example would be Mentha spicata. Mentha is the genus name, spicata is the species name. Sometimes an extra one or two words are added to the end of a genus and species name. This is to distinguish a particular variety of that species. For example, Tagades patula disco orange is a variety of the marigold Tagades patula, which has been given the variety name disco orange because of its brilliant flower colour. Occasionally, two different species can be interbred with a bit of human assistance. When this happens, the resulting plant is not a species, it's actually a combination of two natural species. We call such plants hybrids. An example would be Thryptamine F.C. Payne's hybrid. This is a hybrid of two Thryptamine species bred by F.C. Payne. Sometimes the word cultivar is used to refer to a particular plant. Cultivar is actually any plant which is being cultivated or which has been planted by people. A hybrid could be a cultivar. A named variety of a species could be a cultivar. An unnamed variety could also be a cultivar. A plant species growing in the wild or a weed not cultivated by people would not be a cultivar. Plant naming is based on the Latin language. So it could be argued that correct pronunciation would be similar to Latin. Pronunciation by leading horticulturists in fact varies greatly throughout the world, even from town to town in the same country. It only matters 
that you feel comfortable with pronunciation and you're able to communicate with other people. Species names are usually given to plants for a reason and it's often easier to learn plant names if you understand those reasons. Often a plant's named after a person. Many Australian plants have the species name Banksii, for instance, named after the botanist Joseph Banks, who sailed with Captain Cook when he discovered Australia. Some plants are named after the place they come from. Plants with the name Japonica usually come from Japan, while those with the name Australis generally come from Australia. Other species names are descriptive. They might describe the colour, shape or some other characteristic of the plant or part of the plant. The following plants all have descriptive names which are generally very easy to decipher. Think about them and try to understand their meanings. families you'll have a framework upon which you can build your understanding of plants. If you can place a plant in a particular family then you're greatly narrowing down the options of what it might be. In a way this is the first step to identifying a plant. The families which follow are some of the largest and most important. These include a very large number of commonly cultivated plants. Look at the various examples from each family and notice the similarities within each group. Asteraceae, the daisy family, usually has daisy-like flowers. What is seen as a single flower is usually a composite or bunch of flowers grouped into a single head. The family here was previously called Compositae. Proteaceae, the protea family, these usually have woody or leathery fruits and woody or leathery foliage. Young leaves are often bronze. Flowers are very often spectacular. Myrtaceae, the myrtle family. These are woody plants and the leaves are normally aromatic or scented. 
Rosaceae, the rose family, these flowers commonly have five petals and the fruits are fleshy. Lamiaceae, the mint family, the leaves are usually highly scented, stems are commonly square or four-sided, and flowers are commonly two-lipped. This family was formerly called Labiatae. Ericaceae, the heath or erica family, are mainly woody shrubs, very often small. Leaves are commonly tough, quite commonly small, but not always. Flowers usually have five petals. Legumes are plants with pod-like fruits. There are three closely related legume families, Mimosaceae, Cisalpinaceae and Fabaceae. All three have pods like a pea, bean or wattle. Fabaceae has typical pea-like flowers and are usually simple, undivided leaves. Cisalpinaceae has typical pea-like flowers but with compound, divided or fern-like leaves. Mimosaceae has fluffy flowers, unlike other legumes. Rutaceae, the citrus family, are woody plants with scented leaves and flowers which usually have four or five petals. have a broad idea of how plants are named. We'll now review a range of species from families which you've just learnt about. Brachyscone multifida, 5 to 30 centimetres tall, is in the Asteraceae family. Rudbeckia fulgida, to 90 centimetres tall, is in the Asteraceae family. Dahlia helena, to 1.8 metres tall is in the Asteraceae family. Banksia menziesii to 5 metres tall is in the Proteaceae family. Leucodendron sylvan red to 2.5 metres tall is in the Proteaceae family. Grevillea perinda firebird to 2 metres tall is in the Proteaceae family. Grevillea masons hybrid to 2 metres tall is in the Proteaceae family. Dryandra pramorsa to 2 metres tall is in the Proteaceae family. Eucalyptus ticocarpa to 10 metres tall is in the Myrtaceae family. Melaleuca hyperacifolia to 6 metres tall is in the Myrtaceae family, often shorter than six metres though. Metrosidrus excelsus, six to fifteen metres tall, is in the Myrtaceae family. Photinia robusta, 2.5 to 4 metres tall, is in the Rosaceae family. Spirea bumalda, Anthony Waterer is in the Rosaceae family. Thymus vulgaris fragrantissimus, 15 to 35 centimetres tall, is in the Lamiaceae family. Rosmarinus officinalis is in the Lamiaceae family. Lathyrus odoratus, to 3 metres long, is in the Fabaceae family. Hardenbergia violacea, climate to 2 metres long, is in the Fabaceae family. Phaseolus caracula, to 7 metres long, is in the Fabaceae family. Bahinia blachiana, to 13 metres tall, is in the Cisalpinaceae family. Nephophia uvaria, to 1.2 metres tall, is in the Liliaceae family. Hemerocallus, mountain violet, to 1.5 metres tall, is in the Liliaceae family. 
Allium scanocrosum, 20 to 40 centimetres tall, is in the Liliaceae family. Eriostomon myocoroides, 1 to 2 metres tall, is in the Rutaceae family. Baronia heterophylla, to 1.5 metres tall, is in the Rutaceae family. The naming of some plants can be particularly confusing because the commonly cultivated types are varieties which have been obtained by interbreeding species. And in some cases, even the original parent species are unknown. Such plants are often written as simply a genus, or even a common name followed by a variety name or cultivar name given to it by the plant breeder. The following are examples of such plants.